Uh, it is Tuesday, so we've got How To Tuesday. As you can see, I've got a special guest behind me, um, and he's also a fellow diamond painter. This is my dad. Hi, I'm Chris. Yep, this is Chris, and he's gonna be helping us today because today's video is gonna be about framing. He's gonna kind of walk us through the process of how to do a floating frame. But before we begin, I'm gonna go ahead and show you, um, I know that y'all have known that I've been trying to frame the Undersea Dreaming, one of the mermaids I showed you. And I wanted to go ahead and show y'all an inexpensive way to do just a quick little magnetic poster frame. So we'll start with that one and I'll give you the pricing and where I got it and then we'll move on to the floating frame. Okay, so we'll see y'all in a minute. Hey y'all, it's Shay. This is Editing Shay. I realized when um, going back and looking at the video that my dad and I did, I filmed some of it in the wrong um, format. So please excuse that. I kind of figured it out halfway and I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't been filming it the right way. So you might see it in different orientations. I do apologize. I was just, I'm not used to holding the camera. I'm used to having it in, you know, the tripod when I kind of film myself. And, uh, but what it was, we had so much fun. He just left. And, um, but I also didn't get a chance to say, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I would love to have you guys. And um, if you end up liking this video, because I'm gonna put this at the beginning, please give me a thumbs up. And then there's a notification bell right next to the sub subscribe button. Click on that and then you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, I'm back. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna cover the uh, magnetic poster hanger frame. Now I did get this from Amazon and it's $15.99. And of course, I'll link all these things down in the description if you're interested. This is a 20 inch, um, but they had all different sizes. So this is the 20 inch black. You can get them in brown, white, all different types of colors. So the first thing I did was when I opened it, so you've got two, two panels here. This is the top for hanging it. And then here's the bottom. And when you open them up, they're pretty strong. The magnets are, so you've got one, two, three, four, five magnets on these. And I will tell you, I've been using these for the last week and had this hanging in my closet just to test it before I showed you guys. And it works, because this is a heavy painting. This is a big one. So, but what I will tell you is I did leave the tape on one of them. So you do have to peel the tape off after you open it. So let's go ahead and just, I peeled them all off except for this one. That way I would just show you guys, because it makes the magnets, you know, adhere better. Now, what we're gonna do, because we're doing the floating frame and we wanted to go through the process of that, I'm not gonna do the entirety of what you would have to do to this, but it's really self-explanatory. All I did was I just added some washi tape on the sides just to kind of give it a finished look. And all you're gonna do is just cut off, you're just gonna cut right along the diamonds and then you know right against the washi tape. And then once you do that, you just snap this on and hang it. I did go with black because of course with Mandy Manzano artwork, and of course you just put that one back there, and then you put the front one up here, and it looks really, really nice. And this is a really inexpensive way to frame. And I thank you guys because when I had my Mermaid Mondays and I was saying how I had a hard time trying to frame this, a lot of y'all recommended these. So thank you for that. And it is a wonderful way Okay, trying to get y'all in frame. Okay, so this one, just put it back behind it and line it up. And I like the fact that it came with a cord to hang. That's really nice. Okay, and then you're done. Again, the only difference will be, you know, just, just cutting it. But because we're gonna do another framing, we kind of wanted to show you that step. So that's why I'm not doing it in this, this part. All right, and then let's test it out. Let's see. Like I said, I've had this in my closet for a week and it's been hanging, it's been working. I also don't know if you even need the bottom. I mean, to me, that just weighs it down more. And you could just put some washi tape on the bottom and just cut the bottom of the border off and just use the top one too, which is another option. So yeah, this is one way of being able to frame. Okay, next I'm gonna have my dad come in with us and we're gonna go ahead and cover the other framing. Uh, that's gonna be the floating frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and we'll be back in just a minute with all those supplies. Okay, now for the fun part, we're going to get into the math and we're gonna get into the final planning of how to put this onto the frame. Now, in general, 
we all want our art to be you know symmetrical and perfect but art being art if it's off a little bit it's okay as long as we don't have anything glaring either way so the whole concept now that we cut this off and you can see now where we've eliminated all the white sides on the uh, work that the concept is we want to get this floating in the middle of this frame okay so so if we want it to be exactly the same from top and the bottom and side to side here comes our fun math skills now what i do is i'll get a calculator and the first thing we want to do is here's the math approach i use okay we want to determine the size of the painting and right now we have it at 30 and a half by 18 and a quarter okay so that's the size to go in the middle of it now the way i do my math is I'm taking the frame, the top of the frame as it is right now, as you can see, this, this is the part right here that we're gonna go inside of. So the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do simple math elimination. I'm gonna do the total of this is like approximately 33 and three eighths that it's going to be in the middle of by 21 and five eighths, let's say. Okay, now for the basic math, the way I've done this is I take, I take the length of this, which is the 33 and 3 eighths. I subtract the size of the painting, which is 30 and a half. Then I divide by two. The reason I divide that, I divide the difference in two is what I have left over was approximately, I think 3.375 inches. Divide that by two gives you about 1.4. So you have 1.4 on the top, 1.4 on the bottom. We do the same thing here, that we know the total of this is 21 and 5 eighths about, and then I subtract the 18 and a half, and I divide the difference by two, therefore getting the size. Okay, so now we know exactly the border we want this to be floating around. Now, what I've done is I have cheated for you, and I have done it. I will move this over here okay. out of the way. All right. And I'm going to show oh, you okay. what I've done. Let me do it over here. Okay. So one of my secrets, we do a lot of house painting. My wife and I do at our house, Shay's mom and I. And as we were told by painters and trimmers, blue tape is your best bud. Use blue tape for everything. If you need a roll, you buy 10 rolls, but you use blue tape for everything. It marks great, it doesn't stick hard, it doesn't leave a residue, it's great. So whenever I'm doing a project on anything, I do this all the time. I'll just cover myself in tape galore. So I can grab them, I can put them, if I'm painting, I, if I can do all that, I do that a lot. So what you've seen I've already marked up, is I have marked up those boundaries on both sides, top and bottom, okay? Now, and I marked up the bottom and the top, I've got squares and I've taped them all off like that. Now, when you put the painting on here from the top, it's gonna to fit pretty well exactly as it needs to be. Now, the cool part about doing this frame on the top, and you'll see this in a minute, that we're gonna take this off remove the glass, flip it over, and that's where our paint is gonna go, right where we can see these exact same corners. Okay, as you can see, I removed, I removed the artwork. So this is a front, so we're going to move this over. I'm gonna make sure my tape is good and down. And these are the target squares I'm going to aim for. Now, we're gonna remove this. Now, one of the things, I have, I have chipped my fingernails so much on doing this. One of my keys to doing this is screwdriver. Yeah. But this sure beats you in doing your nails. Yeah. Because you're going to be doing this quite a bit. Pour it off. Okay. And the piece here, you're not going to need anymore. Okay. So we're going to put this out of the way. Okay. Here's the other piece we're not going to need. So, but uh, here's the thing we have right here. Oh, yeah. Now, what is interesting about this, this is not glass. This is that poster type of frame. So like plexiglass? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Very thin. Okay. Now, the one thing, obviously, 
and we would normally and I don't see smudges as you know as everything you make sure that this is clean mm -hmm. now I did want to mention because I'm not sure if we mentioned it at the beginning uh, the two frames that were purchased it is it was buy one get one free now, let's see what I have done I have moved this exactly within the basic confines of where I want this to go okay you can see this right here now the whole concept on this floating frame, ideally when you have two heavy pieces of glass squeezed in an object, especially you know the diamond drills and everything, that it nothing should move because it should stay the same. But you're always concerned that it might slide a little bit. The other thing, because we are using that acrylic glass, it's real thin, it's, it's like a poster frame glass, that it may not be that strong. So what I've done is kind of give us some protection to make sure it, it, you hope it won't slide down any, is that we have a, the, we have the heavy duty double-sided tape that holds up to 15 pounds. Now, there's a lot of weight in this, but this is not a 15 pound object. So what we're gonna do is we're still on the back side of this on that front frame, and we still have it exactly where we want it to be. Now, you could do this anytime you wanted to, but see where I'm putting it right here at the top where you can't see it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it some room here. I want it to not be seen. Okay, so we have that piece right here. Now, I don't do the entire frame. What I do is I give it about, and the reason I'll tell you why I don't do the whole thing is I don't think it's gonna buckle and it hasn't yet because of the weight of the diamonds that they stay hanging down. Okay, and that way at least it gives us a gives gives it a fighting chance not to slip and slide. Okay, now we have taken the second frame, and here's probably one of the more challenging parts here. So the second frame is going to go here, but because we have the sticky tape ready to go. Okay, we don't want to disturb what we've already done. Now, we've only put the sticky tape up here on the top, the, you know, the double-sided tape. So what I'm going to do is start down here at the bottom, okay, and make sure this is in here, and I'm going just to roll this down. And I think we are in business. That so we're good. going to push that down. Yeah, all we did when y'all were gone, we just peeled off. There was a backing to okay. it and we just peeled that off. We're going to do this. Now, here's where the difference is. Now, this would be your cardboard back on a normal frame. We all know that. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm gonna use my screwdriver again. Oh, that's right here. Okay. And we're going to push these back. Now we want to make these without breaking that double glass. We want to make these as firm as we can on here. And again, be, being sensitive to the fact you don't want to break that glass, but you want a firm connection as you would any frame. But this is going to make give yourself the best chance you can that this is going to stay firm. Let's see. Oh, she looks frame. so good. And we just take off our wow. tape on the top. Wow, look at this, y'all. And this color will go against any of your wall colors that you want to do. We can wow. get that out in a second here. Yeah, that looks so good. That looks great. That one's out. Oh, that looks so good. Y'all, it's finally framed. Hopefully Yay. I'll have to update y'all and see if it stays. Yes. <laughs> Shay is not allowed to call me <laughs> if it doesn't work. This looks so good. Wow. Look at this. Oh, she's beautiful. And this will so go against the wall. From, wow. The window. That looks and, so good. colors. That's how she put it the back. The flat frame is going to show out. Yeah. Now, the very last thing we have to do here is to put a hook, a hook in it. Because of what we bought, you'll notice on the back of the cardboard, that's where the hooks were at. Okay, so our very last thing we're going to do is put a hook up here. 
Now, again, using our math, our wonderful math skills <laughs> and my tape, okay, we're gonna find the exact middle of this. 24 and a half, that would be 12 and a quarter. Right there okay. is the middle. Whenever I'm trying to mark one spot on tape that's a, that's a pointed area, I always use a corner of the tape. And what I'll do is I'll use that corner right there. We're going to use one of the pre-made nails we already or the hangers I had already available. And that's this one right here. Now, okay, that's where my tape's gonna go. Make sure you get the arrow side down and put it where you know you're gonna be able to hang that. Now, mm -hmm. um, right in the middle. Now, I don't have a drill, but what we I'm do. gonna- but, I, but I'm gonna use this, okay. this here. Normally I might take a hammer, but I'm not going to because I don't, I, this, the, the fragile nature of this, and I just want to get the whole, you know, I just want to get a hole started here. So yeah. Just mark it? Yeah, I'm close here. Okay. Now, where did you get this hanger from? Uh, this came probably from another hanging kit that we okay. had. Okay. Uh, and that maybe is not going in that much. I probably should have done that, but I can also do a sharp nail to get the very center hole in this. When, and we use tools for tools. Yeah. Everybody does it. Okay. So right now I have two holes right there. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get them started. So we also have the world's tiniest screwdriver here. <laughs> this one here to see if I can get that to go in there. And we're gonna do it right here. Oh yeah, you don't need a drill. Nah, it'll work. Yeah. Let's get the one started, I'll tighten them up later. Now, of course, the next question I have is, will you hang it for me? Sure. <laughs> My warranty is not that wild. It lasts about 20 minutes until I get in the car and go home. <laughs> and you're gonna, and I'm gonna be hard to be found after it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it'll work. Now, the obvious thing too, if you if you prefer, but the reason it's gonna be obvious too why you don't do this is someone says, why why don't I do a wire? Well, the obvious reason on a floating frame, because the wire is going to be visual here. Oh, yeah. If you did it here, yeah. you, would, you would see the wire. True. That wouldn't so, look good. Yeah, that makes sense. So anyway, we're good to go. Yes. Well, we're ready to hang. Put it on the wall. Thank you. Sure. And, and I'm sure there'll be a picture of what it looks like when it's up. Yep. Editing Shay will uh, take a picture and yep. post it for y'all. Yep. And like I said, I'm also going to post a picture of one of the ones that they've done and how they hang them in their window. So thank you again. Well, thank you all very much. It was, it was a treat to join you and we're so proud of Shay and her work and the whole diamond art world. We thank love you. It too. Thank you. Hey there. One other thing I wanted to point out is after you're done, um, you know, using both the frames, using both of the pieces of plexiglass and framing this as a floating frame, you still have a leftover, you've got two pieces of the cardboard. You still have a leftover frame with the backing. The only thing it's missing is just your plexiglass, which a lot of times, you know, if you seal it, you seal your diamond painting, you might not even want glass, you know, on top of it. So that's another bonus is you have a whole nother frame. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, buy one, get one free. You're able to frame one and then you still have another frame and it was for $39.99 from Michaels. And I'll post that in the description. Okay.